Hello ladies, gentlemen, boys, girls, innies, outies and in between us. My name's Dan. Welcome back to another PAP Reports. Today is Tuesday, April the 14th, 2020. Today we're starting with an update to PAP Reports from the 10th of March in which we spoke about Sergeant Stephen Shaw. 46-year-old Coventry-based Stephen Shaw was arrested on the 22nd of August last year and appeared at Birmingham Crown Court where he was granted bail after admitting to charges of attempting to cause or incite a female under the age of 13 to engage in sexual activity and attempting to engage in sexual communication with a child. Now, even though he was granted bail at the time, the Birmingham Crown Court judge told Shaw, I'm granting you bail today. It's no guarantee about the way the judge will decide your case. He or she may decide you have to go to prison for this. Well, it now appears that Shaw not only tried to incite the youngster into inappropriate behaviour, it also appears that he also sent her a sexually explicit picture of himself whilst grooming her as well. Now, to be clear, thankfully, the youngster was not in fact a youngster, but rather an undercover police constable catching out predators like Shaw. One of the worst things about this is that Shaw himself had previously received training in relation to safeguarding children who had been victims of sexual abuse. Birmingham Crown Court heard that Shaw engaged in explicit chat with the girl and asked if she had watched pornography, and he said he hoped he could turn her on with his little penis. He also said they could have full sex if she wanted, and then sent a sexually explicit picture of himself. When Shaw was arrested, he admitted committing the offences for his own sexual gratification, saying that he fantasised about having sex with children but would not act out his fantasies. When police raided his home and recovered an iPad and laptop, they found 48 indecent images of children which had been sent to him via Skype. Shaw said that he simply could not help himself. So what's exactly stopping him from simply not being able to help himself? Moving past the chatting and going on to more dangerous things. In passing sentence at Birmingham Crown Court, Judge Christina Montgomery QC said, you attempted to groom that person who you believe to be a child and engaged them in sexualized conversation. It began as insidiously as grooming does with compliments before introducing the subject of sex. You invited that child to meet you and then you stepped up a gear and made explicit references to her sexual experiences and of course due to the serious nature of this case you can imagine the judge dealt with him harshly of course he didn't <laughs> in fact Shaw was sentenced to just 14 months suspended for two years ordered to do 150 hours of unpaid work and was ordered to register as a sex offender for 10 years. The judge said this was a relatively short-lived episode which thankfully did not result in the harming of any child. She said she has also taken into account that Shaw's wife suffered from a complex illness and went on, I accept your fall has been very great. Well clearly it wasn't a fall from a big enough height because he didn't cave his bloody head in. And for the record, he did lose his job too. Poor boy. Must be devastated to lose his job and escape prison. A 21-year-old who hasn't been named due to outstanding charges was arrested on the 28th of March, later charged with possession of Class B drugs, going equipped to steal and acting contrary to paragraph 23, 1A and 2 of Schedule 21 of the Coronavirus Act. Although he pleaded guilty to all offences two days later at Wimbledon Magistrates Court and was fined £200 for possession of drugs and £60 for the offence under the Coronavirus Act, Metropolitan Police have since admitted it was identified this legislation had been applied incorrectly. Surprise, surprise. The charge and fine under the Coronavirus Act was subsequently set aside. Metropolitan Police spokesperson said the charges for possession of Class B drugs and going equipped to steal were not overturned and the £200 fine stands. In this case, officers were rightly dealing with an individual suspected of a separate crime and who was also in a public space without a valid reason. However, he was incorrectly charged with an offence under the Coronavirus Act 2020. This legislation only relates to potentially infectious persons which was not applicable 
in these circumstances. This is a very new legislation and we have been working with all of our frontline officers to help them interpret and understand it. This includes sharing the recent guidance from the National Police Chiefs Council and the College of Policing. The officers involved have been spoken to and reminded of the way the legislation should be applied. Silky Carlo, director of UK Civil Liberties Group Big Brother Watch said, it's astonishing that after a string of damaging failures, the emergency legislation is still being misused. These sweeping powers to fine and detain people are so broad that police may try to apply them to any one of us. We are in truly dangerous territory with such expansive powers and the police's inability to use them adequately is severely damaging public trust as well as the rule of law. The Metropolitan Police are also looking into another potential misuse of the Act after a 15-year-old boy was arrested in Kingston, South West London on Thursday, April the 2nd and later charged with possession of a bladed article in a public place and failure to comply with a restriction contrary to paragraph 23.1a and 2 of Schedule 21 to the Coronavirus Act. Don't know what the outcome of that is just yet, but if I find out, I will let you know. NHS frontline key workers are being told by police that their NHS ID cards are not sufficient proof of essential travel. Some staff from Cambridge University Hospital have been reporting the fact that they are being stopped by police on suspicion of non-essential travel, to the point where Cambridge University Hospital Trust, the corporate side of the public NHS, has to step in. It said the Trust has spoken to Cambridgeshire Police to seek clarification surrounding the incidents during the nationwide coronavirus lockdown. And the police force has now had to issue a reminder to its staff of the guidelines surrounding health workers going about their daily business. Since speaking to the police force, the Hospital Trust said it considers, it considers the matter resolved. Chief Constable Nick Dean said in a statement on Sunday, there are reports circulating on social media that officers are stopping NHS staff on their way to or from work at Adam Brooks Hospital. This morning we have spoken to Adam Brooks and have confirmed these reports date back to early April or even prior to that. It is inevitable that officers going about their daily business will stop and speak to our colleagues across the health service. We as Cambridgeshire Constabulary have had nothing but support from right across the health sector as every police service has experienced right across the country. We are all united in our support to stop the spread of this virus and to save lives. NHS staff carry ID cards and that is more than sufficient to show who they are and why they are travelling. We are very clear that we support the NHS. We have reminded our officers of the guidelines and we have done as we have done continually throughout this evolving situation. More and more people in the UK are turning against their neighbours after the police requested that breaches of the legislation and recommendations should be reported to them. Now, personally, I've always found this amusing. I mean, as if the police expect the majority of the public to understand the regulations when they themselves are struggling so much with them. In fact, police were called to a house in Mackworth, Derby, where a mother and daughter were drinking following the cremation of the husband and father. Although they do acknowledge that some people came to pay their respects, they insisted that they were keeping a distance. However, police turned up saying that they received reports that there was a gathering. Kirsty Smith, the daughter, said, we explained to them we all lived at the same address and that today was the funeral of our dad. They apologized and left. We don't know why anyone would report us as we get on so well with all of our neighbours. They all knew Steve, got on with him and knew about his death. It's just disgusting that at a time like this, when everyone is going through what we are, someone felt the need to wrongly report us. Prior to setting off for the cremation, police were also called, so they actually turned up twice. Kirsty said, because of the new guidelines, only 10 of us could attend his funeral, but people still wanted to see the coffin leave. Dad was a volunteer for the blood bikes and because of that one of the other volunteers led the procession away with a wreath that read Rip Steve on. It was pretty obvious to anyone looking what was happening. We weren't having any type of after party or anything like that. We were just having a drink and a laugh remembering the good times with Dad. We assume it was a neighbour who made the call to the police. We can't think who else it might have been. 
but we had done nothing wrong. All of this after Labour MP to hear Ali was allowed to attend a large funeral in Sutton Coldfield at the beginning of the month, when police attended to find 15 people at the funeral when only 10 people are allowed, and when the report initially said that there was about 100 people there. I really do think common sense is lost on so many police and that they're simply wasting their time chasing reports from people who don't know the regulations properly themselves. And now for something that's a little interesting, based on what's just happened in that last story. A street party was actually allowed to continue on Good Friday after police attending what's been reported as a mental party in Hull, East Yorkshire. DJ Chris Marshall organised the event after being inspired by the weekly clapping for NHS workers around the country. I wonder then if his street party will become a regular thing. I'm sure the police won't like that, as it might encourage others to do the same. The party, which took place between 6.30 and 9pm, had been raging for over two hours when cops turned up after complaints of people congregating. Police, however, upon attendance, allowed the party to continue after they deemed that all the locals were staying within their boundaries of their homes while enjoying the tunes. Chris Marshall said, People were bringing patio sets round to the front lawns. Some people opened up windows and were sat inside watching. It just went absolutely mental, he said. Everyone stuck to social distancing and there was no partying in the street, but the atmosphere was something I've never seen before. He also said the cop's attitude was fantastic after they asked how everyone was and inquired about how long the party was going to last. Chris organised the event to give residents, including families, something to enjoy during the coronavirus lockdown. Now, obviously, police need to enforce the social distancing, but as I've said previously about common sense, a street party is more likely to get out of control than a quiet funeral, which proves the point I've been making for months, that discretion and guidance is no good without policy because there is no consistency when enforcing anything and this isn't just a problem for the police but how do the public know what is okay or what is not okay when one constable is going to say one thing and another constable is going to say something completely different. Surrey police have left a few people upset after posting a poem, a poem on their Facebook page the poem, which is a reminder for people not to flout the lockdown rules, opens with a thank you to those who have followed government advice before moving on to those allegedly still breaking rules. Now, I've been unable to find the actual poem, and I wanted to because what I found quoted in the Surrey Live newspaper doesn't seem like it has the entire work of literary art, but I will recite it to you as it is quoted in the report. The majority of you are listening which is really great to see. However, some in our community are really take the pee. Unless for essential reasons or exercise at home you must stay, or I'll give you a ticket with a fine you'll have to pay. However, a threat of a fine shouldn't really be where we're at. Because if the 900 plus deaths hasn't put you off, you're a monumental something. Ellswood Lakes car park closed. Rygate Hill car park closed. You should only be visiting such place on foot. As you can well imagine, the so-called poem had its share of mixed reviews online. Ranging from, can I just say I am loving the rhymes that you're putting in post. Big up to the officer that does the poetry. To what I think is my favorite comment. Some people still think that poems are easy. If it rhymes at the end, it's okay if it's cheesy. But poetry does take a fair bit of skill, which is obviously lacking at Surrey Old Bill. You may think you've cracked it by making lines rhyme, but your rhythm and meter are a heinous crime. Let's hope that you're better at chasing down criminals, because your poetry skills are decidedly minimal. <laughs> which I think was brilliant. A big thank you to Patreon supporters, AD, Audrey, Carl, Copwatch UK, Daniel, Dave, Dean, Holly, Ian, J, Marty Lab, Mr. Mina, President Trump, Peter and Rich. Your support goes a long way to helping me continue providing you with this content. Anyway, that's all I have for you today. Please like, share, comment and subscribe. 
Let me know your thoughts, as I know many of you will. And until next time, stay safe, look after each other, film the police and other officials. Good night, all. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you like the content and you'd like to help support the channel, you can do so. In the description of every video, there are some links to ways that you're able to help support the channel so I can continue putting out content. If you're unable to help us in that way, hit that subscribe button up the top there. If you haven't already, become a subscriber. That is support enough. Share the videos, comment, like, it all helps. If you're looking for something else to watch, up top there is my latest video. Down the bottom there is a video that YouTube recommends for you.